Good morning. Good morning to our uh, participants here in the Zoom room and for for the others who are joining us at FB Live. I never envisioned the time where I would be sharing a topic very close to my heart. I would have uh, two disclaimers though as I start this discussion. One, um, the principles I'll be sharing is primarily based on personal experience as a homeschool parent during a time in the year 2000 when homeschooling was not yet a popular choice for learning. And during the time when uh, those who were homeschooled were either child stars and perhaps missionary kids. I still remember the time when a group of uh, public school teachers gave me either amusing or quizzical looks as I lined up at the cashier together with them with an armful of school supplies, magazine racks, whiteboard, pens, forkboard. And one of them couldn't help herself but ask, Asa di ay ka nagtudlo, ma'am? No, or in, in Filipino, saan po kayo nagtuturo, ma'am? So I'm coming to you live, by the way, from Davao City because I'm in a work from home arrangement with School of Tomorrow Philippines. So as one homeschooling mom puts it, uh, during that time, it's kind of like building an ark in your backyard and hoping neighbors won't notice. Uh, the second disclaimer is that our homeschool experience was quite different from perhaps what parents are experiencing at this time. Our homeschooling at an era uh, where, when IG stories, FB Live, Twitter posts, or YouTube, and the like were non-existent, wasn't confined at the four corners of our makeshift homeschool room safely tucked at the far side of our dirty kitchen. But as the saying goes, uh, the world is our classroom. Nevertheless, what is common in our experience and that of the parents during this season is that our homeschooling journeys are propelled by a crisis. The still ongoing health crisis and my youngest son's autism suspect diagnosis then. A crisis or crisis in Greek means decision. And thus, uh, this pandemic has forced or perhaps pushed parents and school staff in making a crucial decision so that learning will still continue. And for learning to continue despite limitations, one has to look at the child as a unique individual. Thus, the basic principles that I'll be sharing with you today have been inspired also by three events and people. First is our uh, college president of Miriam College during her investiture uh, last February 5, 2020, Ambassador Laura Kimbao del Rosario, when she emphasized the need to create a learning environment where students can self-learn. And I quote, in a world challenged by disruptions, interruptions, and even eruptions brought by advanced technology and climate change, this skill of self-learning will be needed as they transition, as students from transition from one job to another in a future of uncertainty and vulnerability. And she even said that before the pandemic. Another inspiration for this presentation that I'll be doing right now is uh, our son's graduation, our youngest son's graduation last September from the Master of Science in Developmental Administration program at the University of Southeastern Philippines, where his thesis was done against the odds of the pandemic. And of course, uh, my inspiration would be the parents, perhaps the parents who are present here, who took a leap of faith of taking the full responsibility of educating their children. It's quite interesting to note that in DepEd survey last July 2020, 8.9 million parents preferred modular, dis modular distance learning, where students at home would study through self-learning modules. So that's, that's indeed quite interesting. In all these learning modalities, no, kahit yung iba na pumili ng online, TV, radio, 
or combination blended face to face with other modalities and others perhaps yung mga 500,000 would be considered talagang homeschooling or others may be uh, decided not to enroll their children uh, in all these learning modalities what can you observe isn't it that uh, the significant similarity all children will stay at home or are staying at home and parents have a crucial role to play so it is my hope then that while i'll be coming from a homeschooling point of view other parents who are doing home-based learning will still be able to glean a principle or two as we all navigate these different modalities throughout the school year now uh, truth to be told interest in homeschooling has exploded amidst the pandemic uh, in the past, there were only about 2.5 million homeschool students in the U.S., uh, which makes up about 3 to 4 percent of school-age children. But according to their president, uh, the president of the National Home Educators Research Institute, Brian Ray, they are anticipating that their numbers will increase by at least 10 percent. I'm just privileged to be able to get uh, enrollment data from our homeschool provider, PCSD Home Education Program. And even in this graph, you can really see that, uh, and we're not the only homeschool academy uh, in accredited homeschool academy here in the Philippines, but even in our own homeschool academy, there's indeed a surge of enrollment, especially from August to September. In the past, though, one argument against homeschooling is that unless parents have trained and hold qualifications as a teacher they will not be able to teach their children as efficiently as a trained professional teacher would parents want to give their children the best uh, possible start in life and that means providing them with the education to be able to succeed in the world of work not only do parents are expected if you are um, going into that route of homeschooling not only do parents uh, have to prepare lessons on every subject, they also need to research each topic enough to feel comfortable in answering questions that their children may have. And this is a, a huge amount of work. And even after this, there is still that question, how? You may have the curriculum, you may have the materials, but then there is this question, how will I present the lesson? So if the child is struggling to understand then they could perhaps blame their parents, blame me as their teacher, resulting in animosity and resentment between you and your child. So, have you ever wished uh, that you could just sit back and watch education happening in your home without your direct hovering and constant supervision? It is possible through a tried and true method of education known as independent learning where the student is capable of teaching himself and the student is motivated by the ability to study and learn things independently but then you may protest shouldn't we read to our children help them solve math problems go over every part of speech in their english lessons and make sure they have done a thorough job in doing all of the activity pages the answer is yes to all. Independent learning doesn't mean we abandon our child to battle on their own. Rather, independent learning is a result of a trusting and nurturing relationship with them. But how? No, so the following principles are the ones I have observed. Again, this is a, 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 a personal experience, but also being influenced by my professors and also mentors in the Christian education community and even of studies. So first, cultivating engagement and responsibility for learning among our homeschooled children follows a holistic view of learning and takes into consideration the importance of an effective learning environment. The learning environment that cultivates responsibility is largely influenced not just by instructional, but also by interpersonal, physical, psychological, social, and spiritual characteristics or atmosphere in your home. Environmental preparation is foundational to raising independent learners who would love to learn all their lives. 
some of the elements and dynamics can be as follows, and it is be best simplified by Dr. Lizette Knight in her book, Maximum Learning and Teaching. Let's start with span and schedule. When does your learner learn best and for how long? For how long can your child's attention be sustained? And when does he or she feel most receptive to learning? Now, I have two sons, no? And while growing up, uh, the, the eldest is mostly very active and very engaged uh, at the latter part of the day because he is, he, he is a night owl. Until now, he's still a night owl. Well, the other one is the morning person. And though we have a regular schedule as, as homeschoolers, a regular routine at what time you will start, but I make sure that I will not be assigning uh, subjects that would require focus and attention to my eldest son at an early part of the day because that's not his best time. No? So another would be the setting and the, the seating. Where does your learner learn best? Learning, learning can happen, especially in homeschooling, learning can happen in a variety of settings. Our eldest son who was able to focus anywhere can read even while uh, cooking rice at our kitchen. While the young girl is easily distracted because of his uh, uniqueness, you know, uh, had to be given a space where he can focus well. And then uh, there's another consideration in terms of uh, the learning environment, the sound and space. With what does your learner learn best? Is complete silence beneficial to your child? My son, my youngest son, because he's under the ASD, would struggle with, uh, his, he has hypersensitive hearing. And so it's easy, easy for him to be, to be distracted by certain sounds. And so complete silence would be beneficial for him. Or uh, one, perhaps uh, another uh, child you have can also better concentrate with an instrumental music background. So uh, those are the things that we have to consider. And of course, styles and stimuli. How does your learner learn best? With self-learning modules as the most preferred mode of learning delivery, flexibility is needed for your child to get the most of the modules, whether he is visual, auditory, or kinesthetic learner. Like for me, because my youngest was kinesthetic, uh, was a kinesthetic learner, it would be very effective that when he reads his goals and some of the activities that we do, he would do it standing up or I would devise games for him, uh, like for example, math drills. It's better rather than uh, making him write it down uh, for him to say it to me orally because he, he, he is a kinesthetic learner. Whereas the brother is an a visual learner so it's just easy for him to just focus to to read and write uh, the modules that he's doing so additionally for children to be independent lifelong learners love for reading is really foundational studies show that a child who comes from a print rich environment is usually in an advantage position than those who have little or no experience with written language so a print-rich environment is an environment where the child is surrounded by reading and writing materials as well as literacy models. For example, parents and siblings who read and write for a variety of reasons. So the most important feature of this print-rich environment are parents who language with their child. That is, they regularly interact with and read to the child include the child in literacy events for example just drawing up your grocery list writing thank you cards for the gifts that they receive and constantly encouraging the child in his early reading and writing attempts right when my child first learned the, the letter sounds of a a s and m so he got so excited and he said nanay now i know how to write my sickness because he was also struggling with asthma during that time so even if mali po yung spelling ng aspa niya still i encourage uh, that uh, that interest that he had no? so really encouraging their attempts at writing and reading 
So, how are we preparing our environment to be an effective avenue for independent learning? No, so, that's really the question because that's very foundational. So, gaya po ng sinabi kanina ni Dr. E, set up no, your workstation, so your learning environment. And uh, a very common objection uh, towards homeschooling is that ito po, I'm not qualified to teach my children. So this is indeed a challenge of ability, availability and commitment rather than ability. So to, just to give you a, a, an objective data on this area of concern, the National Home Education Research Institute has this to say. Uh, sabi nila, homeschool students score above average on achievement tests regardless of their parents' level of former, uh, formal education or their family's household income. Another study that they did shows that whether homeschool parents were ever certified teachers is not related to their children's academic achievement. Though I know here in the Philippines, po, uh, for homes, accredited homeschool providers, at least DepEd requires that parents uh, will are college graduates. But in America, wala po kasing ganong requirement. No? So anyone can really homeschool. And uh, uh, the requirements are actually varied from state to state. No? In other countries as well. So the question now we have to answer will be, are you taking the challenge and be available for your children? Second, in home-based learning, your child's teachers are still available to offer guidance and answer your academic question. So you're not really entirely alone. And then third, uh, these are the 21st century skills expected of a student to learn. Character education, citizenship, Communication. In our age, the digital communication, critical thinking and problem solving, collaboration, creativity. Now the question would be, aren't you equipped, uh, tatay, nanay, mama, papa, daddy, mommy, aren't you equipped with these lifelong skills? If not, learn with your child. And this is where the role of your homeschool providers and or schools for those who are doing home-based learning are deemed very important. As the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child. Another fear or perhaps uh, disagreement for uh, when parents were given this responsibility of education, educating their children from home, I don't have time to supervise my child's school day. Someone said that time cannot be managed because it is the same for all of us, 24 hours in a day. The key is to select our priorities and organize them around the time allotted for us. There was a time that I was serving as a school principal of School of Tomorrow during the time when my youngest son was doing fourth year high school. And so we had to work uh, as a family around the time uh, expected of me uh, at school and also the time that he needed for my supervision to be there. You know? So both homeschooling and home-based schooling requires time of parents to supervise their children. The advantage would be the advantage uh, would be for now there will be more time since travel to school will be subtracted from your usual school day, lalo na po uh, for, for students who are in Metro Manila, masyadong traffic po yun. I know some of you would wake up at 4 a.m. just to travel to school on time. Pero ngayon, because we're all at home, then uh, yung travel to school na yun uh, will, is already subtracted from your usual, usual school day. So, it's easier to set up a routine. So, another fear or disagreement would be socialization. What about socialization? Lalo na po sa mga homeschoolers. Uh, what about socialization is the major homeschooling question people have about a homeschooling lifestyle. And in the context of home-based learning, the social-emotional skills of the children will also be a point of concern. 
But it is quite interesting that uh, psychologist Louise Dalton and Elizabeth Rapa in the Department of Psychiatry at the University of Oxford commented that during this extended lockdown, they did a study during this extended lockdown. In general, they found out children with more siblings appear to develop social skills at a quicker rate. So it, it may be that it's the like one child uh, family who may be worst affected, though only children may benefit in other ways, like their parents can probably spend more time helping them personally with homeschooling, for instance. This socialization myth was born of a misconception of what it's like to homeschool. So many educators and critics of homeschooling still believe that we homeschoolers hit the books perhaps at 9 or 8 a.m., work all day at their kitchen table and until 3 p.m. or later, uh, later and spend their day isolated and alone. But that's not really the case, no? Hindi po ganun yung nangyayari sa homeschooling po namin, no? So they can, uh, they really have a lot of activi activities outside of our homes. So Dr. Raymond Moore, author of over 60 books and articles on human development, has done extensive research on homeschooling and socialization. And after and after analyzing and after analyzing uh, 8,000 early childhood studies, Dr. Moore concluded that contrary to popular belief, children are best socialized by parents, not other children. So a homeschooler who interacts uh, freely no, with parents and siblings, more than peers, displays self-confidence, self-respect, and self-worth. The child knows she's part of a family unit that needs, wants, and depends on her. So the result is an independent thinker who isn't influenced by peers and is self-directed in her actions and thoughts. Besides, you can reach out to other homeschooling families that share the same belief systems and have scheduled play dates. That's what we did. No? Eventually, we were able to find other homeschooling families in Davao City. And that's why we, we started a homeschool support group. No? So where students can do play dates and where parents also can share challenges and prayer requests. We also have our own parang homeschool moms meeting or homeschool teachers meeting. So another challenge would be ito po, my child will not listen or obey me, no? So, uh, ito yung very, sa Twitter, no? Naglabasan talaga, especially during the pandemic, no? It's really an issue. So, for me, it's a challenge of relationship, how you relate with your children, integrity, and unconditional love, rather than authority. In other words, parents should walk their talk. First, so mothers model cheerful submission, while fathers model unconditional, sacrificial love. As one homeschooling mom shared, as a benefit of homeschooling, children learn to be servants of each other, because our families families are really a microcosm of our society, and so the way we relate with each other would really reflect in the way they will be relating to their peers and even in their workplace in the future. So, uh, so if you search Google for articles about cultivating responsibility and independent learning, more often than not, the common principle is that of goal setting. No? So goals are considered to be foundational factor influencing a learner's motivational level. In 1960s, Edwin Locke put forward the goal-setting theory of motivation. He said that this theory, in this theory, goal-setting is essentially linked to task performance. It states that specific and challenging goals along with appropriate feedback contribute to higher and better task performance. And that's where I'm most thankful for being led to a system of education that emphasizes goal setting and accomplishment the school of tomorrow system so that's really what i'm most thankful for kasi early on yung mga anak ko naturuan na talaga how to set goals 
how to connect yung long-term goals nila. For example, the material that they need to finish for a year and how to uh, divide that no? uh, quarterly and even from quarterly, monthly, and then weekly, and then daily. No? So because uh, the uniqueness in our system is that the goal is learning, not teaching. So the focus of academic instruction is the individual. And the audience is just one child rather than a class. No? Kasi nga po, we are making use of self-instructional material. No? So, and there are other... There are still other um, areas that support self-instruction. For example, when they open their um, material, the, their self-learning module, nakasulat naka na doon yung goals nila. And they have to read it to their uh, supervisor or to their homeschool mom, no? to, to, to their parents. Na, my goal, my goal for this. So I have a sample here. Okay. So my goal na. This is actually uh, the case or the module of my grand nephew that I am still homeschooling no? uh, during this time. So my goal to count one, two, three, four, five. So it's bite-sized and achievable with uh, an opportunity for feedback after. So by focusing on learners' beliefs, values, goals, and motivations, Researchers have learned about the reasons why individuals choose to engage or disengage in different activities and pursuits. One example I can well remember was the desire of our youngest son to be a pilot. That desire of flying an airplane enabled him to survive not just physics but trigonometry as well. No? Though he may have pursued different cor a different course in college, after visiting an aeronautics school while in third year high school, understanding how these sciences and math disciplines are interrelated motivated him to go through these difficult subjects without complaint. So, naging self motivation na sa kanya. Kasi nga, he was really, at first, he wanted to really be an airline pilot. No? So, that was his intrinsic motivation to study physics and higher math. Which brings me to the next principle of appreciating uniqueness. Just as it is extremely, un extremely unique that two complex snowflakes will look exactly alike, every child is unique. Now, so I have two boys. Ang pagitan ng po nila is two years and seven months. No, but they are entirely unique individuals. Pati learning style nila iba, pati yung mga persuasions at saka uh, interest nila magkaiba. So, appreciating your child's uniqueness means choosing an appropriate and achievable curriculum. So, this was mentioned by Dr. Almario during the first part of our CEM conference. That's why it's quite prom promising that you set San Antonio's presentation the last time also made mention about moving toward a more individualized instruction matched to each student and family's preferences as one of the sustainable solutions to ensure that educational systems are more flexible, equitable, and inclusive. This uh, principle of uniqueness has also strengthened my partnership with CEM during that time when I had to guide my youngest son on what course and college to pursue. So aptitude and interest surveys were vital tools to help us both see the potential he had and compared to his own preferences. Along with the diagnostic or placement test of School of Tomorrow, assessments help homeschooling families evaluate the pace of learning the child has to take and can also be an external validating tool of his achievement. Next principle that I'll be sharing would be about grit and grace. Though grit as a concept is only made popular recently by Angela Duckworth, grit as a factor has been present and is needed for independent learning as it is a character of holding steadfast to a goal through time. It's remaining perse perse perseverant when the going gets rough. Some may think that 
the probability of succeeding is directly related to IQ or talent. However, research is showing that success is much more about grit. This is what Angela Duckworth discovered when she was teaching math to 7th graders. She realized IQ wasn't the only factor separating successful students from those who struggled and that grit, holding steadfast to a goal through time, was highly predictive of success. So being bored, confused, and frustrated sometimes is normal. No, lalo na po sa panahon natin ngayon, no, when they are struggling to understand their self-learning modules. Struggling can make a kid feel stupid or dumb, but as parents po, let's not be too quick to offer a solution. Instead, give him time to figure it out. No, it is very empowering when a child realizes that he can solve problems and figure out solutions on his own. No, so, gaya ng anak ko, when he was struggling to find a solution to geometry problems at all, I would allow him to struggle. I have this tendency as a graduate of electrical engineering because I have also a background in math to immediately you know, give him the solution. But then I had to step back and really allow him to process and to find the best strategy that would work for him. And I will just be there to guide and uh, offer suggestions and solutions. And many times to answer his question by asking question. For example, Nanay, I don't know this. I find it hard to do this. Okay, where in that uh, material do you find difficulty? So, yun po yung mga pinag-uusapan namin. And this pandemic is the most appropriate time for children to see parents modeling grit for them. At the same time, since self-learning has its bad days, when it feels like you are taking three steps back after an inch of progress, it is vital that grace is present in the home to support the child's efforts because there will really be times of failure. No? And so, alam ng ang mga anak natin that uh, he has time no, to figure out again how to stand up and go over the material again. No? So, that's why it's also important that we make our expectations clear. No? So, estimation of students' achievement. John Haiti, researcher and author of Visible Learning, analyzed the results of multiple studies. He used the results for, met for meta-analysis to calculate a pooled estimate or measure of an effect on student learning. And his conclusion, the number one influencer for student achievement is a teacher estimates of achievement. So parents, how do you view your child's ability to succeed under your supervision? Because approximately in a traditional setting, teachers spend 1,200 hours a year with children in school. In a home school or home-based setting, that's 24-7. Thus, your expectation and or estimates of how your student will do well will be based on our positive relationship with him or her. Should that teacher-student or parent-student relationship be based on low expectations, socially or academically, the years more than a thousand school hours would yield less positive results. And so, we have to really start no, to, to make clear our expectations and start from a positive uh, point of view and not underestimate what our ch children can accomplish during this time. As we are reminded of uh, during uh, Educators' Convention at School of Tomorrow, you can't inspect what you don't expect. Regarding the need to sit down and check the goals of your child consistently so that you can see what strategy does work and which doesn't. No? So, lastly, because raising independent lifelong learners is never an easy task, especially with the limitations we are experiencing this season, all these would take a daily decision. A daily decision of getting up and making one's bed. Sabi nga nila, in the science of productivity, 
just do that first thing in the morning and that is to make up your bed no because according to admiral macraven in his address to graduates of 2017 sabi niya if you want to change the world start off by making your bed if you make your bed every morning you will have accomplished the first task of the day it will give you a small sense of pride and it will encourage you to do another task and another and another by the end of the day that one task completed will have turned into many tasks completed making your bed will also reinforce the fact that little things in life matter if you can't do the little things right you will never be able to do the big things right but and if by chance you have a miserable day ang dami pong nangyari ang dami pong ganap uh, still you will go to your bedroom to a bed that's made made by you or made by the child and a made bed gives you encouragement that tomorrow will be better yes a daily decision to commit to this challenge to this calling and challenge as bible believing christians the topmost reason why we homeschooled in the year 2000 was really a conviction to obey god's commands in deuteronomy uh, 6 verses 6 to 7 Hear, Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give to you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands. Bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and, or, and of your gates. And in this verse, we find the principles of individ individualization, intentionality, consistency, dedication, unconditional, life on life. And as Filipinos, the same, experiencing the same unprecedented storm it is high time for us to be reminded that even our own constitution no less affirms that education of children is the primary duty and obligation of parents and the same is merely delegated to the state and educational institutions yes a daily decision to fulfill a duty and for teachers, a delegated duty. And I believe that this pandemic has made us go back to what matters most. When the children are all at home, when many lost their jobs, when the clubs or even community centers, schools and churches that supposed to be our source of weekly encouragement and support have to close, this is the time for us to ask ourselves what really matters most. Since whatever small act we will be choosing to do would make or break our children, we all need discernment and to be decisive on preparing a strong foundation for them. And so, some questions to ask. How is our home environment? What assumptions do we need to adjust or let go? What goals and values do we need to work with our child? What unique strengths of our children do we need to leverage to address a weakness? What long-term tasks does my child, do my child have that he needs to find strategies on his own with my guidance? And how much room for failure does he need to enable him to get up? and try again what expectations need adjusting or clarifying and lastly what one small doable task can i do as a parent to support my child today dr cb evie said that one measure of effectiveness of any teacher is the rate at which he makes himself unnecessary to his pupils 
again, this responsibility of raising independent, lifelong learners is never an easy task. Some students grow exponentially, perhaps in a short period of time, like my youngest son, is really into it no so it was like fish in the water experience with him no? but of course our youngest is a different story no so others may still be figuring out the best strategy and perhaps in a meltdown trying to process all that is happening around them all of these growth we want to see don't happen overnight so it is indeed a daily decision to reflect and readjust what works what doesn't work and persevere with what works. When James Garfield was president of Hiram College, a parent inquired about schoolwork and he asked, Sir, can you simplify these courses? My son could never learn all of this. To which uh, James Garfield replied, It just depends upon what you want. When God wants an oak tree, it takes him 100 years but when he wants a pumpkin it take only it, it would take only three months so it really depends dear parents and dear educators what is your why what's your purpose what's your mission uh, for what you're doing now no so we should well remember that ultimately the success of our children does not rest in our hands but is determined by the will and work of the Lord. And that's why I entitled my presentation, The Miracle of Individualization. So this school year, our dear parents and even educators who are also doing home-based learning. May we be united as we seek God's direction for our children in all the efforts and transition that we are pursuing for an educational process that will truly match our families mission and vision so the challenge now would be will you join the community of educators in rising to the god-given potential of what our children can become during this course of history can we be devoted mothers who will look into their children's eyes and see future leaders or homemakers of uh, to be valiant fathers who thirst for the excellence of God's glory, of students and teachers who feel a stirring in their souls to renounce conveyor belt mediocrity. Will we all work together? Sabi nga kanina ni Dr. E, magtulungan po tayo. Heroes at home to be the change we wish to see in this world. So let's engage the ch children entrusted to our care, that one child, to do that one goal, to learn that one precept, read that one page, finish that one task, one day at a time. Maraming salamat po.